Well, the chemical industry has been in an era of unprecedented change, driven by new feedstock dynamics that have been occurring notably in America. We've had the rise of the shale gas, which has provided um, very economic new feedstock. Meanwhile, in China, we have unconventional materials such as coal and methanol to olefins. And then in the Middle East, we've seen a change whereby the traditional ethane, low-cost feedstock, has become more expensive and less available. So all these changes have made for a new world environment where people are reassessing where to put their capital. Um, companies are starting to look at their portfolios for maximum competitiveness and how to reshape uh, their product portfolios. Um, and that's meant that uh, inorganic growth compared with organic growth may be uh, of different value to companies. And overall, it's driven a trend towards looking outwards for uh, new merger and acquisition activity. So we've seen a surge in M&A to unprecedented number of deals and value of deals overall in the industry. Well, one significant deal has been the merger between Dow and DuPont, two of the long-standing chemical companies in the industry. That's been uh, really significant. And according to our um, competitive company analysis, around half of the sales of that unit, that new corporate com conglomerates are going to be in the performance plastics arena. So we'll see them now driving innovation in the areas of uh, light weighting for automotive, for under the hood applications, all sorts of specialty polymers. And also in the area of um, food transport and preservation, we'll see some novel applications from that uh, powerful new group. And then you've got other areas of very specific um, Alignments where, for example, ExxonMobil is acquiring Jurong Aromatics assets in Singapore, which is a closely aligned group already in their area of activity, but that'll be um, strengthening a portfolio. And then somebody like uh, Nova Chemicals, which is part of the IPIC group from uh, United Arab Emirates, will be uh, taking over um, the Williams Cracker in Louisiana. So these are all portfolio strengthening activities. combination of uh, Westlake and Axial will provide a corporation that has a much stronger global footprint across the US, Europe and Asia than either of the companies had separately previously. The leading company by revenue is BSF, which is uh, unique in many ways because it has a portfolio that's fully integrated across the petrochemicals and specialty chemicals train. It's also not back integrated into an oil major. So um, other leading companies include ExxonMobil, Sabic, Sinopec, um, Formosa Plastics, and they are all covered in our competitive company analysis report. And we know, for example, from our investigations that BSF has a very well-balanced um, manufacturing assets um, chain across the world. They've been selectively investing in areas of the um, product lines, such as in construction chemicals and catalysts. But they've also made investments uh, regionally very specific to capitalize on growth, such as in Mexico, India, China and uh, other areas in the Far East. And so they're, you know, targeting the right sort of markets, as well as shoring up their assets in Europe, in the home base, to take advantage of the specialties value chain opportunity in that region. Uh, Europe's been under quite a lot of pressure um, from the feedstock side because traditionally it's based on naphtha and so the um, competitive aspect of that waxes and wanes with the oil price. So what we've seen, for example, are companies seeking to uh, gain access to competitive feedstocks from outside Europe. So INEOS um, has found novel ways to ship ethane across the Atlantic from the US to its coastal crackers around Europe. And um, other companies, for example, Shell, uh, which got a strong global base anyway, but it is the European company there making their next big investment in a cracker in the US. So in the Middle East, with the uh, changing feedstock dynamic there, we're now seeing companies who formerly uh, were flourishing on low-cost feedstocks now looking elsewhere for their investments. Um, Sabic, for example, 
is planning a multi-million billion dollar petrochemical feedstock on the US Gulf Coast with, um, together with uh, ExxonMobil. This is a very long-term project, may not be in stream until 2023, but it's a very significant investment. And uh, Savic also has been looking at investing in coal-based petrochemicals in China, which is a novel approach. Um, and then Saudi Aramco, one of the major uh, and growing uh, petrochemical companies in Saudi Arabia, is looking to partner with um, a company in Malaysia, Petronas, to take advantage of the growing opportunities in the Southeast Asian market. Looking forward, it's clear that macroeconomic and political forces will have a significant impact on the shape of the chemical industry in future. And uh, we know that we're uniquely positioned to provide the intelligence that companies need to keep on top of that and to shape their portfolios as required to face that future. And uh, one of our tools is the competitive company analysis, which not only provides a deep dive into companies that make up 70% of the chemical petrochemical chain, but also we have a uh, key performance indicators tool where we can look at feedstock economics, we look at the integration profiles of the companies, we look at their proximity to the fast growing markets. And the Global Competitive Report looks at a product by product analysis of who are the leading companies based on our own analysis. And um, these are very useful tools for the industry overall.